Hey guys, this is my daughter, Deirdre. <laughs> okay, Dee Dee. I wanted to share her birth story because I am inspired by a YouTuber, a friend, a Facebook friend of mine, um, who is in labor or having contractions right now. She's been having contractions for seven days. And I know she feels like there's never going to be an end to this. This could be for weeks and everything. And the truth is, yeah, it could be. <laughs> but my daughter, Dee Dee, her birth story is very interesting as well as my other daughter. And I wanted to share it. Um, first off, I had been having contractions for days um, before I actually gave birth to her. Go away. You good now. <laughs> I had been having contractions for days. And um, so much so that, I, you know, you kind of get used to just the pain just coming. Every time you don't know, you like she said in one of her videos, she doesn't know if it's real. Should she be waking somebody up? You know, should we go to the hospital or whatnot? Well... February 2nd, we got all our tax papers. So I wanted to file my taxes, but I couldn't do it that evening. And just like every other evening, I took some Tylenol. I took a nice warm bath, which actually helped slow down the contraction. So I went to sleep. Um, okay, I'm sorry, guys. Um, when you have kids, they don't care about interrupting. <laughs> anyway. I was saying, I've been having contractions for days. Um, I decided, you know, on February 2nd, the next day we were going to file our taxes. And if they got worse, if my contractions got worse and didn't go away, I was going to go to the hospital and get checked out. And I had been to the hospital to be checked out, excuse me, before, but I wasn't dilating. It wasn't doing anything. It just seemed like the pain was just every day and it wasn't doing anything. So, that morning, February 3rd, got up, got ready. I had two children at the time. Deirdre was my third. And um, we caught a bus because we didn't have a car at the time. And we went to Walmart, filed our taxes at Jackson Hewitt because there was no way I could file taxes at that time. It was just, it was horrible. <laughs> I couldn't see myself sitting on a computer trying to file anything um, or trying to fill out any paperwork to file taxes. So, we went to Jackson Hewitt, filed our taxes. The whole time we were on the bus, I'm having contractions, and everybody's concerned and worried, and they're like, okay, you know, and then the guy, Jackson, who had got through my taxes super fast, I, I mean, I don't even know if he did it right, because at that point, I was in a lot of pain, and we walked through Walmart and got a few extra things that we needed, um, got on the bus again, and by the time I got on the bus, the contractions were, I say every three minutes apart. They were three minutes apart, and they were horrible to contract. They were worse than ever before. And I think because I did more walking and the harder, you know, it was harder because I'm walking, even though I could, you know, normally when I take a walk around my neighborhood, I get tired, we walk right back to the house. I got tired, and we couldn't walk back to the house. We're in a mall, we're in a store, you know, and then we had to get on the bus, and I was so happy to sit down. And even though I was sitting... I was rocking, and I was in a lot of pain. So the bus driver dropped us off directly in front of the hospital. That was not a bus stop. <laughs> it was kind of funny. He was, you know, they were, everybody on the bus was just wishing us luck. They was worried that I was going to give birth to the baby on the bus. I kept telling them, oh, this thing's going to take hours. I didn't know how long it's going to take, but, you know. So I got in the hospital, and um, when I... They, you know, checked me in, and I was uh, two centimeters, which was excellent because I was so tired of being in labor and not moving, you know, not progressing at all. So when I found out I was two centimeters, I knew I had progressed a little bit. So they watched me for about an hour, hour and a half, and I went to three centimeters. Things seemed to be moving along. Um... Then a doctor came in and checked me not long after they checked me and told me I was three centimeters and they had admitted me. The doctor checked me again, which sucks. It really sucks. I wish they didn't do that. You know, I mean, I, that's one of the things in my birth plan this time is I don't want to be checked every few minutes. <laughs> not even every hour. I don't want to be checked. It's horrible. It's, it's painful, especially if you have no medication and someone sticking their hands where they don't need to be. Um, anyway. Um, I went to four centimeters. So it was a few hours later um, that they checked me and I was still four centimeters. 
during that time, my aunt, I called my aunt and told her, you know, they're keeping me. I'm having a baby. She came and got my children. Um, it took her about 45 minutes to get to the hospital for where she lived at. And she, you know, she said the funniest thing to me because she was, she was my older aunt. She was older and I love her and God rest her soul. She's just a beautiful person. And she walked in the room and she says, you didn't have that baby yet. It's just, those words was just so funny to me. And I laughed and I'm like, no, I didn't, you know. And she took the little kids and they went home. And she called to check on me, and that was another 45 minutes. And no, I hadn't had the baby yet. Um, finally came and checked me, and I was four centimeters. So this had looked like a labor stall because my contractions had slowed down. They had spread out apart, and um, I knew that it had stalled. It was doing something that it shouldn't have been because I was sitting there talking and relaxed, and I wasn't in pain, and every once in a while I had a little contraction. Something I'd be watching TV with. It wasn't, it was, it had gone back to what they had been days before. Um, so the doctor came in and he says, well, you're already at four centimeters. We've admitted you. Um, I don't want to send you home. So what I would like to do is break your water and see if that helps put you in labor. Anyway. The danger of this is him breaking my water. It's that they're only going to allow my water to be broken for 24 hours because the risk of infection goes up. So I was risking a six C-section by doing this. But I had been in labor for days. I was tired. The thought of going home was unbearable. So I agreed to him break my water. He broke my water. And, you know, in the time frame, he broke my water and was talking to me about... Um, how long this could take and was taking guesses and was talking to my husband and you know all the little things that the doctors do and everything and the nurse is steady cleaning me up in this time frame I went from having no contractions to having the worst contraction of my life and feeling so much pressure that I felt like it was, the baby was coming out and before he left out the room I told him I said I feel like the baby's coming out so the nurse that was cleaning me up, she checked me. She had just finished fixing his bed. The doctor hadn't walked out the room. She looks and she says she's crowning. <laughs> the nurse is standing there and I'm crowning. It was between five to ten minutes. It wasn't that long at all. Before, you know, I went from four to complete in a few minutes. And the time he ran over, washed his hands, put gloves on, and he's like, okay, well, give me a push. And that was it. Baby was out. It was super fast. Um, I was thinking to myself, man, he should have did that hours ago. <laughs> but it was, you know, there's no um, way of knowing what would have happened. You know, the doctor thought I was going to have a baby the next day. He didn't think I was going to have a baby that day at all. So yeah, I don't. I didn't have a chance to go from four to six to seven to eight. I went from four to complete. Once I hear it came down, everything was already ready to move. I think from all the contractions I had been having all week long. So you never know. You know that was my story for Dee Dee, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.